All right, guys. Uh, Steven from Camera Motorsports again. I wanted to show you guys how to set up a timing light for your standalone ECU. So we are working on this MR2 today. Uh, it's running an e ECU Masters EMU Black. The concept is mostly the same. There ain't nothing really different about it. So firstly, we've got our timing light. And on the timing light, there's only three connections. There's a battery power and ground. So we got battery power coming from the fuse box and ground off the strut tower. Then you've got this little fella right here. Uh, this is the spark plug wire lead. Uh, be careful on some of these though. They have an arrow. Uh, this one doesn't have one, but some of them do. And if they have an arrow, then you're gonna want that arrow facing towards the spark plug wire, if I remember correctly. Now, this is the dial. Not all timing lights have this, but if you have it, um, basically you're going to set this to whatever you have locked in the software. So I like to use 10 or 15. So if the software says 10 and you have your dial set here at 10, then on the crank pulley, you should get top dead center. Now, uh, if you don't have this, then you're just basically going to look for your mark. Most timing uh, indicators on the plastic have multiple positions, you know? So let's just say it says 15, so you're gonna have to find out which mark is 15, and then uh, whatever you have set in the software should hit the 15 mark. So like I said, I prefer these ones with the dial just because that top dead center is always easier to find. Uh, the software is a little different. Hopefully you guys can see this, but essentially it's all the same. Uh, in the EMU, we are going to go to the triggers table, primary trigger, and here you're gonna enter the ignition lock, and you see how we have it set here at 10. So that's gonna match this fella here. So we're gonna go ahead and start the car up. Ideally, you're gonna want the uh, car warmed up with a solid idle. It can be kind of high, but so long as it's steady, that's what, what it is. Uh, especially guys that have cams, aftermarket cams, your idle's gonna be lumpy, but if you can get it like a little bit uh, higher RPMs, it usually will, uh, it'll usually mellow out for you to time it. Now there's two ways of doing this. Um, you can do it in the software. So in the ECU master software, it's the trigger angle. You can adjust this. Or alternatively, if you have a distributor, you can uh, loosen the distributor and literally move it left or right. So let's get this car started. <clears throat> So now that we have the car running, you can see that our timing light is flashing. And if you look all the way down, you can see... Uh, you can see we have the mark right there. It's a uh, pink mark and white. So you can see ours is already set and it's set on. So because that one was already set, uh, I do something I do want to mention is that uh, those marks on the crank pulley they are hard to see. A little bit of whiteout will go a long way, but uh, <clears throat> but yeah. So basically, if it were off, I would just adjust this trigger angle. I would adjust this trigger angle here to where it needs to go until it lines up. But again, like I said, if if you're not able to do that uh, or the distributor is easy to do, you can do either way. Either way works. Now, general. Do keep in mind, uh, this is kind of like a, a nuance of the EMU software. Do keep in mind that your trigger angle is the max timing you can add. So for instance, on this car right here, the trigger angle is set at 53. That means that anything above 53 on the timing table will do absolutely nothing. Uh, granted, you're not gonna be doing that, but if you have, uh, this this is a little bit more critical when you have uh, more cylinders. Uh, because this number will change dramatically on obviously we're not going above 53 degrees of timing uh, but you know just something to make note about and the mega squirt ECU basically is the same thing uh, theirs is a little bit different on how to set it up DIY auto has a really really good instruction on how to do that but essentially it's the same deal uh, one other thing I do want to mention if you are coil on plug if you're coil on plug you're not going to be able to attach to this So if you're calling plug, you're not gonna have a wire here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a spark plug wire and you're gonna gut that. And basically you're going to stick a spark plug wire into your valve cover and then the other end of the lead will go into the coal itself. And then, then you'll be able to put this deal guy on. 
um, on certain Nissan cars, uh, SR20, VG30, RB, etc. Those have like an external igniter box, and a lot of them on the igniter will have a timing loop. It's a little thin wire that's in a loop, and then you will just tie this on there, and that should do the trick. But a lot of times, uh, a lot of these will not read just the small timing loop, so you'll end up having to do basically the spark plug wire method, anyways. Now. One other thing to keep in mind is that when you have timing locked enable, you should be able to rev the car up and the timing should more likely stay. What we are seeing on a lot of older cars though is that the timing is drifting in the higher RPMs. Um, if that's the case, what that means is that even though the table will say uh, 10 degrees, it will actually drift to like 15 or 20 degrees. We've actually had a handful of RB26 cars actually pop on the dyno because of that. So, you know, the timing table would be 10 and they would go, we'd go get on it, we'd verify timing and it would drift to, you know, some we had one that drifted all the way up to 26 so 26 degrees on a big turbo car under boost on pump gas that's a huge no-no and fortunately enough we had the knock sensor set up so we were able to catch knock pretty quickly so we would turn down the boost and the ignition to make up for it but it would cause the ignition timing to look really weird um but yeah you know another thing that you can do though is obviously a trigger kit or replace the the non-functional hardware so whether it be a distributor cam angle sensor or what have you um you know you can definitely do that but that is something to pay attention to and timing drift is a, is a really big thing it'll it'll kill all sorts of old cars you know cars that have 20 years of mileage on them you know so just do keep that in mind but yeah so i just want to make a video on how to sync your timing on your standalone ecu and like i said most of them are set up the exact same way uh you know just definitely read the manual and check it all out all right guys